everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings, the card game by Fantasy Flight Games. And I'm Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And today we are talking about the encounter set, um, Doggledore Orcs. It's a 14-card encounter set that shows up in Passage um, through Mirkwood, Journey Along the Anduin, um, Escape from Doggledore, Journey to Roscobel, and the Hills of Emin Wheel. The 14 of the 14 cards there's actually only seven different cards there's um plenty of repeats in this so there's Dolgador orcs and um chieftain Uthtak and the Dolgador beastmaster and then there's a couple of treacheries driven by shadow and the necromancer's reach and then um there's two locations there's the necromancer's pass and the enchanted stream so there's really only seven card seven different card types here or seven different card names, but um, it's a total of 14 cards. So um, as compared to maybe the the last encounter set that we talked about, um, had a lot of single single cards and just pairs, uh, you know, repeat. This is a little bit different. Um, and so, Grant, what's your, what's your first take on this uh, encounter set? The one that jumps to mind is being the one that causes the most damage, as we've explained in other episodes of Card Talk, is the Necromancer's Reach, which deals one damage to each exhausted character, whether that be through questing or card effects like Berivor and some of the like. Any character that's exhausted will take one point of damage. It is probably the one that causes the most pain when it showed up. It's like, <laughs> this is what I save a test of will for or and, Eleanor for. <laughs> yeah, and the reason why I get grumpy at this is because there's only two copies of it. So when you have a big, thick encounter deck that you make, you know, you think, ah, oh, what are the chances that I'm going to get a Necromancer's Reach? And then all of a sudden you you do heavy questing with all these one hit point things and all of a sudden it's like, oh, there goes my army. And it's like really frustrating when, you know, but that's that's the way the game is designed, you know, that all of a sudden these cards come out. You know, I'm actually kind of glad that there's no shadow effect on Necromancer's Reach because I could only imagine what the shadow effect would be on that card. But I agree that that treachery is a really annoying treachery. The other thing I always found is it's kind of what I, and this is this is how I work is that my brain always couples cards, you know, or looks for similarities in cards. So you have Necromancer's Reach, but then I look at Necromancer's Pass too. The Necromancer's Pass is really um, also to me kind of the annoying location here. I get that the Enchanted Stream kind of you know prevents you from drawing cards, but that the fact that in order to travel you have to discard two cards from your hand. Um, at random first of all if you have it and you don't have two cards in your hand to discard you can't travel there that's the first thing and that's a pain in the neck and the second thing is that um, it's one of those locations that again I don't feel comfortable keeping in the staging area because it has three threat which to me is you know borderline just too much to keep in the staging area so you have to kind of travel there to get rid of it it's not like it's a pain in the neck to um, to quest it that's only got two points two two quest points but yeah it's too dangerous to keep in the staging area and so you know so that that combination of necromancer's pass and necromancer's reach really is what in my mind defines this encounter set yeah um the next card that i think is a worthy mention is chieftain utak the 35 engagement cost orc that only gets stronger after he attacks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, thematically, that's awesome. Yeah. I love the fact that he's riding a wog um, and he just looks so badass. He's got six hit points, three defense, three attack, and he's one of the first cards to have the victory point card written on. And he's probably the one card I look forward to seeing in every playthrough. I want to kill Utak. I want him to come down because I want to mollywop him. 
Now, as a guy who lives in America, what do you mean, Molly Wop? Take him to the cleaners. <laughs> Clean his clock. <laughs> Make him be ice. Yeah, right. And I think I think you're absolutely right about Chieftain Uftak. I, I think he's one of those really difficult enemies. He's not quite a boss, but he's not quite just a run-of-the-mill enemy. And I actually get really scared when he comes out. I, I don't like the fact that when he attacks, he gets a token that gives him plus two attack. I I just think it's... It, <laughs> it's just a... He's a really nasty enemy, but not quite a boss. And so... He's one of those guys that I just, I always have a hard time like mentally dealing with because I know that, you know, in a lot of the, in a lot of the encounter cards or in a lot of the encounter decks, he's, he's not the biggest enemy, you know, he's kind of a supplemental enemy. And so that's, <laughs> so, you know, you may be get, getting ready to deal with the hill troll and all of a sudden Chief Uftak comes out, you know, or you're trying to, <laughs> I don't know, whatever it happens to be, you know, you're trying to look for Gollum in the hills of Emmanuel, and all of a sudden Chief Uftak comes out, you know, like it's just always that supplemental thing that just drives me nuts, you know, and, and that's the way I always felt about the the Beastmaster, the Dolgaldor Beastmaster, is that I always... I always thought that those two guys were kind of similar to each other, even those two copies of the Beastmaster, you know, with that threat cost of 35 um, or the engagement cost of 35, you know, it puts them in the kind of the same, the same category in my head, you know, like maybe you can leave them out there for a couple of rounds, but eventually you're going to get up to 35 threat unless you're running a specific threat reduction deck. And so that Beastmaster with that extra shadow card can be, killer because you never know what the heck that shadow effect is going to be you know and you may have to cancel one but then you can't cancel the other one or something you know like what are the chances that you can actually cancel two three four different shadow effects if you have two if you have two beast masters out there so it's it's um so those two those two cards i always kind of put in the same category even though i know that their stats are slightly different yeah i'd agree with that um but there aren't that much difference in their stats. There's two defense points and one hit point difference. Uh, but for everything else, they're exactly the same. But when I, f I don't exactly fear them coming out. I look forward to it because I know that they're going to present some sort of challenge, whether it be a challenge for me to defend the attack of Utak and then the defense of a beast master with two shadow cards or if yes, by some what? reason Utak has four resources on him and then I say oh my god how am I going to kill him <laughs> right <laughs> which has not happened by the way <laughs> <laughs> right you want to kill him before he gets anywhere near four imagine four resources he turns into Gimli um, <laughs> that's exactly what I think of him as he's the opposite of Gimli right it's... Um, but that leads me on to probably the softest ball, well, one of the soft balls of the encounter deck, Driven by Shadow. Yeah, actually, I was going to talk about Driven by Shadow, but now I wasn't going to talk about its effect, as m its when revealed effect, which is fine because, you know, you're increasing threat. And typically, at least in the games that I always play, you know, you always want to quest for a ton. And so... Uh, for every card to get plus one threat isn't necessarily a big deal. But the big deal to me was its shadow effect when you have to discard an attachment. That drives me nuts. Is that, you know, and so, you know, to have to get rid of an attachment that I just worked for the whole game to put out or, you know, like that the reason why attachments are in the player deck is because you want to be able to use them. Unless it's a unique attachment where, you have three of them in a deck and like a light of Valinor, you know, where you have to get rid of it and you may have another one in your hand that you can, that you can um, put out right away. Like that whole idea of discarding an attachment, especially off the defending character is to me just a real big pain in the neck. And so I don't know. How I agree you, with, yeah. I, don't, I was going to say, I don't know I how agree. you feel about driven by shadow.
driven by shadow when it's revealed as a when revealed it's a softball but when it's revealed as a shadow card it discard one attachment from the defending character i can possibly live with it's an undefended attack you've got to discard all your attachments so it's more of a pain that way because all attachments if you get an attack by an eastern crow that's undefended because you want to defend say the hill troll it's going to wipe out all your attachments and that's the thing about shadow effects is you just don't know what's coming i mean there's a couple of cards that allows you to see what the shadow card is before you before you play it or see what the top card in the encounter deck is but you know for something like that to come out it's just really a pain in the neck like forget the forget the actual effect you know we can deal with like you said we can deal with the one with the increase in one threat or whatever but it's just the shadow effect that's a pain in the neck and I guess the only other card that's left in the encounter set is the Dolgold or Oryx, and there's really not much. Um, there's really not much with the Dolgold or Oryx to say. I don't. I don't think that they're necessarily nasty. I think that they're just kind of a. I don't want to say a run of the mill enemy because they do have a a little bit of a when revealed effect. You know, deal two damage to a questing character. But what, you know, there's so many characters that usually you're questing with. Um, that that's not necessarily a deal, and two damage again is right there at my threshold for for what is an important amount. So it's not it's kind of inconvenient. Um, but once they come out, yeah. I mean the only the only thing that's kind of a pain in the neck is that you c its engagement cost is ten, so you're almost automatically engaging them, and then you have to deal with them in the first round or you know right when they they come out. But with two attack, that's not horrible. Um, no defense and three hit points you know they're easy to take care of so they're not they're not overly inconvenient yeah like i say they're a soft ball as well other than the two damage to a character it's generally not a big deal the only other card we have left to talk about is enchanted stream which i just left generally sitting in the staging area or if i've got asphalt i asphalt it because i don't like not drawing cards <laughs> yeah and that's I I mean, I mentioned it earlier on that, you know, like uh, Enchanted Stream is just a location that's not really for me. Uh, like, it's just whatever. Draw a card, you know. And so it's not ne it's not necessarily a card that I worry about too much. Well, I don't worry about it. It's just a pain when I see it. I just let right. it sit in the staging area. <laughs> Two threat all the time. It doesn't bother me. It's, it's not like it was a, ne a couple of necromancer passes. It's <laughs> funny because it's... Um, you know, for, for the audience out there, the, where Grant and I decided to do this because we wanted to talk about the encounter cards and we were going to pick encounter cards and talk about them. And we were going to, you know, talk about some but leave some. But we end up talking about all of them and kind of the general, you know, if it's not a huge problem, we, we're like, it's a pain in the neck. But that's the whole point of the game, right? The encounter deck is supposed to be a pain in the neck. So, you know, you never know what you're, you're going to get. So you get the enchanted stream and you can deal with it. But when it comes out, you're like, ah, this is a pain in the neck. Why do I, you know? And so it's how many pains in the neck can you really deal with at one time, you know? And that's really what, yeah, that's... what the game comes down to is that, you know. Have you... Yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to say, have you ever had um, if you're playing a two-player game, have two of the three copies of Necromancer's Reach come at you at this straight one after another. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I've had all three yeah. come out, you know, because how many times do you play those core sets? I think that the, the, the core scenarios are some of the scenarios that I go back to, you know, to deck test and just to play, to have fun, or if I'm trying to get some some people, new people to play the game. You know, so for me to, to talk about the, the the core scenarios you know like so i've had anything that you can think of that's a pain in the neck i've probably had you know like you just explore the you just get done questing through the enchanted stream and then another enchanted stream comes out you know yeah, so you're still I'm not trying you know it, it, like you deal with it it's not going to break your game but that coupled with the other effects in the encounter deck depending it slows on which, you down. yeah and so you know so it's almost like you know, so we talk about each of these, but most of you know, there's there's the pain in the neck card, which is kind of the the low, you know, like the lowest, the lowest of the, yeah, like, like yeah. But then there's the the harder card, like the like Chief Uftak, and then you know the the bigger card after that, like the Hill Troll and the you know or whatever, you know, wind wind swept, 
windswept rain, which is one of my favorite mm-hmm. uh, treacheries that uh, come yeah. out. And yeah, you know, where you have to, where you have to discard all your attachments. It's like, ah, you know, those are the, those are the really big things. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, thankfully we're not talking about windswept rain anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but the biggest thing I've had was when I was playing a four player game, I had three, Necromancer's Reaches come out and a copy of Doggle Door Orcs. So oh. that was like a total of five damage to yeah. deal out. Right. And it Ev- annihilated our board. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's that's a scoop. You know, yeah, that's when you you call it a day. Oh no, we carried on and we ended up winning that game. Oh but it, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it annihilated the board. Thankfully we had enough heroes sent so that we still had sufficient questing power right but right. we'd done we would got pretty much all our allies were dead <laughs> right so i think everybody should join us for the next episode of card talk where we're going to talk about the encounter set passage through murkwood which is also the name of the scenario and within that encounter set you'll also hear us talking about the quest cards and the quest effects um, so join us next time for the next episode of card talk mm-hmm.